for years people would be like, I don't really get it. And then post Pandy, everyone was like, oh, like a sourdough. First of, all, first of all, I love how you just abbreviated pandemic. <laughs> post Pandy. Everybody meet Peter. What up? I'm Pete. I work with Blade and Bow. Peter is a, what's a mobile whiskey promoter? Or yeah, I guess what you would call me a brand ambassador of sorts. Brand ambassador. Ooh, yeah. I would love to get into that. So tell people, tell people what you do. So I uh, I drive around America mm -hmm. with the Blade and Bow horse trailer. Very nice. Blade and Bow comes from Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. It was uh, yeah. from the Stitzelweller Distillery. Uh, which was kind of the center of the bourbon universe for years. Stitzelweller. Stitzelweller. Stitzelweller, yeah. okay. And, I'm gonna um, look that up. But for the most part, I uh, drive around and I um, show up events and uh, hand out cocktails. Yeah. And, so uh, you're the fun guy. I am the fun guy. You bring the party. I do bring the, the party. party. comes with you. <laughs> Is this an enjoyable gig? Do you really oh, absolutely. You know, it's, um, I tell all my friends, it's like, it's a lot of fun, mm -hmm. but it's not super fulfilling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How so? Because you, you, you're apparently giving, you know, liquid smiles to people all the time. That's got to be some sort of fulfilling, but. Yeah, I like interacting with the people. Mm -hmm. I like telling the story of the bourbon. The story of the bourbon. What is, yeah. quickly, the story of the bourbon? So... Is it, I, did I catch you at a bad time? No, no, no you're, you're like, great. I'm not here for work, man. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Home it's, service. It's, so the Stitzelweller Distillery was the first distillery opened after Prohibition. The first opened, one. Opened on Derby Day in 1935. They like New Law Gold Rush. Exactly. Here we go. And it was the biggest distributor, the biggest distiller, and they created like the cathedral of bourbon. Mm. And that was the center of the bourbon universe for years and years. Yeah. So all these great distillers came through there. All these great brands came through there. Yeah. Come late 80s, early 90s, the I place know. isn't state of the art anymore. People going to vodkas. Exactly. Okay. So they sold off and all their I brands. I blame MTV. I blame MTV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so uh, they sold off all their brands, and um, but they were still using it for aging and yeah. distilling. And um, 10 years later, the place was bought, and they did an inventory, and they found all these barrels that they realized this was the last liquid that was ever made at the Cathedral of Bourbon. Wow. And so they what sat... Is that, what does that taste like? Well, so... What they decided to do with it was mm. age it using a Solera system. Now the Solera system It's like science. It's just <laughs> it is. It's a little science. It's, it's science. a little science. But uh so they took those original barrels yeah. and they let out five percent. Gotcha. And then they take seven year old barrels and they fill that. Mm -hmm. And then the next year they let out a little bit, let out a little bit, and they add another layer. Yeah. So what you have in there is that original liquid yeah. all mingling around. With new liquid. Right. And they're almost over, multiplying it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's funny, I, for I years... I do science. <laughs> <laughs> for years, people would be like, I don't really get it. And then post-pandy, everyone's like, oh, like a sourdough. First of all, <laughs> first of all I love how you just abbreviated pandemic. <laughs> post-pandy. Well, you know, you, you don't want to put so much pressure on it. <laughs> and we, we will one day look at it. I like, like designating it as a post a piece of time as mm -hmm. a, like a, like, rather than like a serious thing. <laughs> right. So we're going we're gonna to see this trailer. All right. Really quickly, and I want to take a small tour. I won't drink and drive. You're gonna go left. So they use that. The agent uses the Solera system. Mm -hmm. And what's nice about that is instead of taking like an eight year and a 12 year and smashing them together, yeah. they mingle. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. With like an older bourbon, mm -hmm. get uh, like the nice smooth taste, yeah. but you don't really get like the notes. With a younger one. Gosh, there she is. Look at that. 
blade and bone. No horse in there. No. Only Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey from the Shashasha guy, whatever that word is. <laughs> Just put it in. <laughs> <laughs> the schizo berries of um, the actual bourbon. Uh, sir. Yes. Peter. Yes. Uh, do you have social media? Uh, Blade and Bow Whiskey. Blade and Bow Whiskey. Yeah. Very nice. Blade and Bow Whiskey will be on Catman James. Uber uplifting. It's a it's a Vegas show. Thank you so much. And drive safe. And Thank you. Drink sir. responsibly. I will. Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> you want a bottle? I'm gonna grab you. I can't do anything with it though. Thanks, Pete.